Thank you for being present here with us today. Um, so my name is Muhammad Hamdan, and um, I'm facilitating the session called um, Censorships, Palestine Censored, um, a International Siege on Arts and Culture. And this is session 14 uh, as part of uh, 24 Hours for Palestine um, that uh, uh, continues until tonight, 8 p.m. Palestine time. And I want to first thank all the organizers and all the speakers and participate people who participated in, in this marathon. Uh, I've attended a few sessions since yesterday, and I was really, you know, the diversity of what I've seen in terms of uh, participants and in terms of topics and forms uh, going from performances, monologues, and, and also, you know, some live sharing um, is really, uh, was really something that was, um, uh, gave me a sense of hope and belonging. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I'll introduce myself a little bit more and uh, the participants to this conversation and then give some background uh, as an introduction before before we start uh, the discussions. So I'm a theater maker, uh, a maker and a, um, a trainer in nonviolent communication based in Beirut in Lebanon uh, from Zukak Theater Collective. And I'm welcoming here today uh, with me, Joseph Junior Sfer, a musician and uh, also part of Frequent Defect Collective based in Beirut, in Lebanon. Um, we uh, welcome also Renda Mirza, who is a visual artist uh, based between uh, Lebanon and Marseille. And I would like also to um, um, introduce and welcome Jonathan Dean, Seri Dean, who is a theatre actor, director, dramaturg uh, from Zukak Theatre Collective based in Beirut, in Lebanon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our fourth guest, Hanan Hajali, will not be able to make it today because of health issues, and I really wish her the quickest recovery. So thank you, everyone. So I will start with uh, some info before, or sharing some background info uh, before um, we kick off the conversation. And I would like really to start with, you know, how I feel since uh, October, since October 8th, uh, with, uh, you know, what's happening today, this on, on genocide that's in, on, unfolding before our eyes in, in Palestine. Um, and what one of my sense or my, my sense of what's happening is really that my worst nightmare or one of my worst nightmare as a kid is happening today. Um, I was four years old when the Israeli occupation of uh, Lebanon took place. And um, I remember as a, as a kid, you know, this mixture of feeling of fear and action, drive for action. And one of the key questions that I have always had in mind was, you know, like, when someone will help us, why nobody is helping us to face this unbalance of power? Um, in 1987, when the first Intifada uh, uprising, Palestinian Intifada, was um, has started, um, I remember looking at those photos or, or TV screens where I see, uh, I used to see children, kids, unarmed kids, facing soldiers that are full of weapons. And today, what we are witnessing, uh, we are witnessing the Israeli army and the Israeli settlers aggressing, killing, destroying life, big scale. And all this is documented live online. And somehow, life goes on. And if we decide to talk about that, we are just banned. Uh, censorship has been a constant topic during our chats and day-to-day -day conversations between artists here in Beirut um, and uh, since the 8th of October of last year. And today's session is kind of continuation of these conversations that we've been having about censorship, which is the visible part of the iceberg, but also the underlying power dynamics that uh, allows or allow that this kind of censorship. And it's important for us to talk about it today because censorship has been and will be always a popular strategy used by any oppressor to hide their oppressions. And it's a very good friend of genocide because it allows it to happen. Um, I'd like to quote the Israeli historian, Ian Pape, who said, if we don't call what's happening today in Palestine a genocide, tomorrow we will not be able to call the right-wing fascism. Um, so, uh, and since the 8th of October, we have been facing this strong censorship 
um, whenever we want to talk about Palestine, uh, and especially in Europe and in the USA. Artists, scholars, academics, journalists, students, employees are constantly being cancelled, silenced, threatened, challenged whenever they make a reference to Palestine or to the current atrocities that are happening. And during my conversations and preparation for this uh, conversation, this talk, um, I, I got, um, you know, some stories where people or artists were really cancelled. It's obvious. You cannot go. And I also identified many other stories where censorship is more subtle, a slayer, uh, where we can we face control on you know the content or the use of certain words. And in this um, conversation, we're going to you know tackle share some personal experience as artists and uh, regarding this more subtle and slayer um, censorship to reflect all together around it and how to to deal with that or handle that. And then in the second part, we will try to tackle a little bit more the underlying dynamics that are, you know, allowing this censorship. What does this censorship tell us about the current moment we are living? So that's a little bit the, the, the background and, and the outline. And I will start with the first question uh, to you, uh, my dear colleagues, uh, about, um, you know, to share part of your experience something that you've lived or witnessed in the last few months uh, um, in regard to that censorship that you're talking about. What happened? What did you do? And, and what was the outcome? Uh, so I will start with you, Junaid. And uh, during our conversations, um, when we were preparing this, um, this talk, uh, you mentioned your own experience of censorship also in Lebanon as an artist living in Lebanon. And, and I would like you, if possible, to, to start a bit from there and tell us more about an example of censorship that you faced in the last few months in regard to Palestine. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for organizing this. Well, I'm, uh, I know that there are, as you said, more many artists who really suffered or less, lost jobs or got canceled because of censorship. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm, I didn't suffer that much, but I witnessed some moments that made me so alerted on the situation. And I think it's essential to start to uh, question the roots and the beginnings of, uh, of uh, how censorship starts to emerge and what, what, what threat it could make on, 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 on society and on, on imagination. Um, so, um, you know, like censorship is a playground that we play within in Lebanon, like we are not living in La La Land since we were a post-war generation here. And um, we always deal in our, um, 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 with our theater, with our, like, in literature and in music, we always face in Lebanon uh, censorship matters that we need to deal with. And we deal with them, like, we learned how to deal with, and we know what threat it could, you know, like, and what harm it could make on, on society and on processes and on on your mentality of how you can grow in general. I'm, uh, I was, I was directing at a, a, and a dramaturge of a play and the play was about to open in, in the UK. And the play, half of it mentions is about the history of Palestine because the play is about uh, post-colonial uh, uh, era and the impact of post-colonial era and on some countries. And Palestine was of those in this play. And in the play, you know, like we, we list a kind of series of events that that talks about the history of Palestine. Um, and the theater that was hosting, which they were like also co-producing, um, um, I, I had from the artistic directors of the theater a request like to, uh, or a question of like, why not, why not mentioning the Holocaust uh, uh, within the Palestinian storyline? and history line and uh and the aim like to make it more complex and not to be you know like talking about one narrative or something and here i felt like uh i was surprised at first like to have this kind of question because um 
you know, like you live and you you deal, you live like as an artist while you play, while you try to challenge and face censorship in your country. And then you barely like have to face that usually before in Europe or in the US or stuff. And suddenly you are faced with that. So first you are surprised. And second, I felt like, uh, oh, that's not different from where I'm raised. So this is my playground. I wasn't like <laughs> confused much or like, you know, it was like something that is, um, okay. Um, I'm learned how to talk about this, you know, and to, to discuss. And then I was like, um, uh, we talked about, we went into the subject matter that is, I mean, mentioning why when you mention, when you have to talk about one history, you have to mention another. I mean, there's every time when there is a play about the Holocaust, the artistic director would go and ask the people doing the play to mention the Nakba. Would that happen? And here you start to feel like, you know, like the hypocrisy sometimes that is leading now the um, the Western countries, let's say, uh, those countries that were like supposed to, you know, defend the freedom of expression. And then you find that these practices are still like, mm, uh, no, that are not happening in the good way. So uh, this led us to a long discussion about that matter i i had to you know like um, uh, go through it i'm a person also that you know like you have to understand that okay there are institutions and behind these institutions there are governmental support and institutions have to follow certain uh policies and but also you need to remember that behind these institutions there are people and those people are also uh, need to be aware and so uh, and awareness is important because this censorship is also sometimes a beginning of a discussion when it's not hurtful when it's not a uh, something that cuts you or kill you and uh when it, when it's a moment of discussion it's that was i invited to that i is that to discuss more and talk more and to create awareness about that at the end, we didn't change anything in the play, and um, but it took time and effort. You know, when you are in a process of creation, and you start to feel that these are there are these questions about your work, you have to start to have like these censorship antennas, and you start to question yourself as an artist, and this uh, could be a harmful process for artists. Okay, thank you tonight. And uh, I mean, I, I love how you framed uh, censorship as our playground and that, you know, censorship can be also a beginning of discussions. And I think we uh, all here uh, in this encounter relate to, to that in a way. Um, I would like now to ask you, Randa, uh, to share a bit more about your recent experience regarding censorship. And I know that this year you've been working on publishing a new book, a new photography book, and also participating in um, uh, photography festivals in Europe. So, uh, uh, and I know what you told me once from your own experience, because you worked before uh, with, uh, in, uh, I mean, with uh, KSA, the Saudi Arabia. You told me that you felt sometimes as if you were not in France or not in Europe, but maybe in KSA. So if you want to start from there or comment on that and then tell us more about something from your recent experience about censorship. Hello, everybody. Thank you more. Thank you, everybody. Um, yes, my experience with censorship is mostly about words, whether it, I mean, maybe I can start with the Saudi Arabia um, uh, case, uh, let's call it like that. I mean, I, I was invited to Saudi Arabia to talk about my work in the archive as, as using the archives in my work. And uh, at a certain point of time, there were some images that were censored because they were showing naked women, but that's very specific. And then I noticed that I've been asked not to mention that I am a political artist. Like she told me, I've been told to use the word engage instead of political because I would be misunderstood. And then at that case, I felt threatened, and uh, especially that I'm not in a liberal democracy. So I asked 
them to check my texts because I didn't want to get in trouble. And uh, there was other words that were uh, at issue here. One of them is instrumentalization. Okay, that's understandable, maybe in that case. And then the, uh, the third word was nation. Uh, I didn't go through a discussion. I accepted what was happening and I decided to, to move on and to, and, and I understood where I am as, as I'm also Lebanese. I work with censor, I work around censorship and I learn where I am and how to understand what, how far I can go into, into opposing what is being asked or negotiating it or discussing it or refuse it totally. So it's it, it's case by case. So when I was, uh, as you mentioned lately, I was working on a on a book and it was a major exhibition in France, and I was writing the text. So the the, the work is about the history of violence in Lebanon, the post war history of the city and violence, which covers uh, a thirty five years period from 1990 till 2024. So of course there was a lot of talk about, I mean, there was a big chapter about the Israeli attack of 2006 in Lebanon. So we were really in the, uh, so mentioning uh, the genocide was not out of topic. It's, uh, I was I, I was writing my personal text, my introductory text before October uh, and uh, and wh and when I saw my editors in November, I said I would like to mention something about what's happening in Palestine at that moment. And I've been told yes, this is necessary. Um, and I was very happy at that point. I felt that I made uh, somehow the right political uh, decisions when I decided to work with with the, this edition house and. Um, while, while, while all my friends, artist friends around the world were being cancelled or silenced. So I wrote a sentence and uh, it's a very basic sentence saying that I am heartbroken uh, watching the genocide, live streamed genocide uh, from my, the live streamed genocide unfolding in Gaza. And this relates uh, uh, this relates to my work since I've been working for a long time on the spectatorship of violence and uh, uh, and the relationship between the violence as spectacle and uh, and uh, quoting Susan Sontag regarding the pain of others and uh, so that that topic is uh, relates relates to my work. Um, six months later, just before going to print, I was. Uh, I was uh, faced with uh, while working on the maquette, so we were really working on color correction of the images. Uh, at that particular moment, stressful moment, the editor tell me everything is great about this book. I about th there is one there is and the text is beautiful, but there is but I cannot publish it, and I was uh, very shocked, and I said why. And, they, and he said, well, there is a word that is problematic. And that word was genocide. So, so, so we're talking about a two year work process, about 220 images, 220 pages, uh, a similar number of images. And uh, there's so many ideas that are being discussed here. It really covers the history of the of uh, Lebanon, the history of violence, but but I was faced with this idea if I could use a word, there is a word that, that was making, uh, that could stop everything. And for me, this was a contract breaker. I mean, I, of course, working with an editor, working with an editor abroad, a European editor, is uh, you can discuss a lot of things. There's a lot of discussions going on. But for me, the, the use of the word genocide was a contract breaker. And I said, and my first reaction was, uh, I'm not going to uh, accept to be censored in France uh, because I'm, uh, I, I immigrated in France. I, there is a, there's this whole talk about freedom of, of expression that is uh, very present in the public sphere. Uh, 
And of course, whenever I was censored, nobody accepts to say that it's being censored. So this is, I think, one aspect of censorship is this is not a censorship. This is... Um, so I try to have some discussions actually by stating so so what's the problem with this word actually so I was I really started investigating I was uh, about why is this word so problematic and I understood that it's um, it's it's a word it's so so I could use massacre I could use war crime I could use any other words I, I would like to use but not the word genocide i mean to cut the story short let's say that i was uh, i i was offered a good deal let's say and that was that i could use the word genocide but i had to say in front of the word that according to me it's a genocide which was not which was called completely crazy because the text was signed by my name and that had the date so it was very obvious that, and it, and I used the the first, the, I I used the I. Uh, so it's very obvious that the text is written by me. So I said, why would you want me to do that? Maybe you can. Why do you want to change my own words? Maybe you can add a sentence at the end of the book saying that that how it's it's a common practice, well, uh, of publishers and producers to say that, or newspapers to say that it, uh, it doesn't reflect their own idea, ideas. But, uh, but, uh, but at the end, uh, I thought that I was very lucky because it was uh, in February and all my friends were being cancelled and I was offered a deal out, which is to keep my word, but to add another word, which is according to me, it's a genocide. So I accepted the um, the deal. I mean, until today, I still question if 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 what I did was accept was okay. Should how should we face this? Should we face this by being radical, by refusing totally to be silenced, or or to or should we try to negotiate or 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 to find some common grounds where where we would be where we would be comfortable at least more comfortable uh so that's my experience with uh, the the censorship at, and and this word if you want the word genocide accompanied me in multiple round tables that i was having in the in a in, in the festival later on and uh, it's uh, and it became it became very it's a big question like should I use, is 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 my fight about using this word in particular or or can we talk about so many things and raise so many questions and avoid using this word uh, because it blocks the conversation somehow or is what is the most important word are are we discussing discussing here uh, terms descriptions definitions. Or are we discussing a, a, a violent practice and uh, and the break of all the break of all uh, humanitarian and international law? Okay, thank you, Randa, for uh, this sharing and um, and I hear from from what you're saying uh, the important that that pressure uh, when first I hear that you know we are denied to say that we are censored. <laughs> So that's something that I heard from what you're saying, which is, I would say, a double form of censorship. So we have to, we cannot speak, we are censored, and we cannot acknowledge that we are censored. And this is a triple violence, I would say. Um, and uh, I also connect with, you know, when we are censored, uh, we, we we have a multiple, you know, kind of feelings. Uh, uh, we were angry, we were afraid, we feel isolated. And I want also to, that's why also I, I'm, I'm happy today that we're having that discussion so that we can also, you know, fight this isolation that we can, uh, or self-doubt even. And and for the use of the words, I, I think, you know, 
uh, this is also something very visible in the media, and we'll not talk about it today, but it's, 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 it's a practice, it's a common practice of any oppression. And I, I had a similar experience recently when I was in a nonviolent communication uh, um, seminar, and I, I used massacres, because after our discussion ran about genocide, and I, I was with you in some round tables, I decided to say, let me not, not use a very, and I had... Uh, in, 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 the, in the audience, some Israeli also, and I, I said that I don't want to use the word uh, genocide not to, you know, create a polemic. I, I don't want to create polemics. I want to have dialogue. And then <laughs> some of my audience got triggered because I used massacres. <laughs> and I've been asked uh, to use another word, like the violence of the army. Uh, 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 and then the person said, because I want to protect my army. So uh, uh, just to say that, I mean, I mean, this is a very uh, um, important or relevant question that you're asking. How to deal with that? Which word to use and where to, to stand? Um, and I hope we will be able to discuss that a bit more in, in the second section or after this question. I would like now to move to you, Junior, and June, and, and just, um, I know during our conversation to prepare here, you were talking about a different kind of censorship, I would say, which is uh, you've been, uh, you discovered that you are in a lineup with a musician in a music festival. Uh, and one of the musicians was from Israel. And this was, you know, after October. Um, and... And actually, you know, I mean, for, for, for uh, our listener who don't know that, but as Lebanese, there is a risk anyway to meet uh, any Israeli because we are at war and uh, the law in Lebanon and in Israel forbid that kind of, of connection. Uh, so there is that layer. So it's a kind of situation where sometimes we find ourselves internationally and that's those situations where we don't know if we, it's kind of asking us to censor ourselves also. Uh, <laughs> that's why I, I thought that, you know, talking about that is important and it, it, it shows also how the international community, you know, there is something that they don't acknowledge. They don't want to see. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's obvious, but no. Uh, so, Jun, Jun, can you tell us more about your experience in the recent months? I mean, if you want to pick on that example or any other thing you'd like to share uh, with censorship and pressure? Um, of course. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for putting this together. Uh, like, uh, in addition to what uh, Junaid and Randa were saying about you know the 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 illusion of this uh, freedom of expression or or in any form of of uh, expressing especially when it comes to certain topics maybe like what we're seeing in the world is like maybe uh, like let's just call it freedom of expression as long as it's uh, not making any substantial impact to the agenda of whatever place or platform you're on you know, because it's becoming uh, pretty, pretty farcical. You know, like we've, as as already, you've already mentioned as well, we've been facing censor censorship in all forms and in many places. But one just wonders when it comes to a genocide that is happening that is very visible all over the world. The the kind of layers that kind of allow it to be censored or or the kind of many forms that that uh, that, that is perpetrated all over so a bit to, to talk a bit about um, all the experience we had uh, as you just mentioned Mo, we were supposed to perform at this uh, festival and uh, apparently like one of the reasons why why uh, uh, we accepted in the beginning playing at that festival because uh, their their statements regarding the situation and also from personal contact with them, uh, it was clear to us that they understand what's going on. Uh, they're also opposing uh, the, the the genocide and and also uh, it didn't start here with this uh, latest. Uh, uh, let's call it uh, resurgence and violence because that violence has been happening for so long now and we've been so used to it. So we had all these discussions uh, before the festival and it was clear to us that, okay, it's a, it's a situation where we could be part of. Until, uh, I guess, like a week uh, before the festival, uh, it was, I think, six or seven of us uh, that uh, found out that there is uh, not only like an Israeli composer that is supposed to be performing at the festival with us, it was an ultra, let's call it, uh, like I don't want to call words here, but like 
skip it at ultra zionist fascist uh, we saw his online profile it was like basically pure hate and death speech and uh, a, a very clear and disgusting uh, uh, naming uh, of the situation and like things like death to all Palestinians and th you know it, it was really really bad uh, I think we've all come across these kinds of uh, people and 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 you know so uh, right away we contacted the festival and we were like uh, sorry uh, we cannot be part of this festival uh, this doesn't at all uh, work with us anyway I'm not gonna go into the details but uh, and after that, straight away, uh, there was a sort of uh, uh, back and forth conversation with the with the organizers, saying that, uh, explaining that yes, uh, you know, we've already discussed before, and we're totally against that, and we didn't realize that that person is this and that, and uh, it's also because uh, apparently. As, as it happens a lot, I, I guess, especially in Europe, where certain institutions or uh, certain funds that come from places, they kind of uh, dictate certain quotas and they're like, uh, if you are to be offered this fund to, to for this uh, festival or for this whatever, uh, you should be including uh, X person from here or, or X people from there. And uh, apparently, uh, from what we found out is that the organizers of the festival, meaning the main curators, did not curate that person. And it was basically another institution that was working with them. Uh, and they, uh, they, what they got from the government, I think, saying that you, uh, for you to get the funds for the festival, you need to be working uh, with that uh, uh, other institution. And that other institution had curated the, this person. Anyway, to, to keep the story short, uh, we were like, okay, we understand, but there is no way uh, that we will accept uh, partaking in, in this sort of uh, situation. And uh, straight away, uh, we, we got a response that they are actively working to, to, uh, to remove at least that uh, uh, person from the curation of the festival and uh, addressing the, the 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 issue with the other institution that they're working with and to kind of uh, like part ways uh, in a sense or uh, like meaning that that uh, curation of theirs of the other institution will not be uh, part of this festival and we got now I don't know if it's because we, uh, there was many of us who, who opposed this and maybe like weighing the the risks of uh, uh, six seven people not partaking and uh, like not doing their performances at the festival or that there was some sort of uh, realization that they had um, it's not up to me to 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 talk about their intentions but at the end of the day, uh, that happened, and uh, the, basically, uh, the person was removed from the festival. Now, uh, the other layer that I want to talk about, which is like not the blatant, very in-your-face kind of censorship. There's like so many layers to it that we that we face uh, every time, and it was basically after all of this happened and. Uh, uh, before our performances, we requested uh, a few minutes because we wanted to to talk, uh, do a little um, introduction about us, and also to talk about the situation that is happening. And uh, before the performance, there was like th this is uh, the other layer I'm talking about. There was a request to kind of. Uh, like they didn't know what we were gonna say of course we didn't share it with them and uh, of course what we were gonna say was very clear and upfront and uh, uh we didn't want to like uh, you know jump between the lines or or you know play any sort of uh, uh, self-censorship game and there was this request to kind of uh, avoid using uh, uh 
I don't remember how it was worded exactly, but basically, like I try to, you know, not cause a stir or whatever, because there's gonna be a lot of uh, people from the press and uh, representatives of the funding institutions or whatever, and uh, uh, people from, you know, like th those sort of people that are gonna be filming or they're gonna be there listening. So there was this request to kind of like self-censor in a way without it being blatant of course we didn't comply at, at the end and uh, we said no and we we're gonna just say whatever we we're gonna say but what i mean to say here is that even in like the, these hidden layers of of uh of uh you know interactions with with the uh, with the uh, in, in any on in any platform or in any space or anything there's always like the fear of uh, certain people that are let's say organizing uh, or or uh, having to to uh, uh, you know make, uh, make sure that the 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 happening goes well and everything there's this fear from them of being uh, not censored themselves not uh, uh, you know face or any back like huge backlash anyway other than like uh, uh, like press fear mongering and also like kind of these attempts to scare them away of, of uh, even thinking about any 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 opposition to the current situation or anything and also threatening with cutting funds with uh, with everything which is leads me also to another point uh, uh, but I'm not I don't think we have time to talk about this now is also the the kind of agendas of these uh, funding institutions and and every everything and they're also supported by not just governments but like by the corporations and everything which also fall under this system of you know we can leave that conversation for another time but this is this is sort of the other hidden layers that yeah. that also are not very visible but they do make a huge uh, impact on the situation yeah. yeah thank you june and and i think that's i would like to pick up on on those layers a little bit as you said i mean you mentioned two things here the media and the funding and uh, and we no, we had, I, I know several stories and I don't want to share it now because we don't have the time and it's not necessarily safe, but I know situation where people uh, and an institution faced, you know, uh, censorship and cut off funding because of media, you know, they also alimenting each other. The media uh, then is somehow a tool to pressure also the funder or a tool that the funder created to pressure themselves or whatever we want to say that they are everything is connected and and i think it's it's important to keep that in mind when we are talking about censorship um and uh i would like now just before we move to the second part of uh, today's um session depending on the time we have to discuss the underlying uh, you know what is the censorship telling us more uh, I would like just to, to just pick up a few ideas that I heard from you and then ask you if you want to add any comment on that about how the censorship is working and how, or mainly how are we dealing with it or how can we deal with it. And I hear first the importance of, of you know, uh, gathering. Uh, and I hear that from your story, too, because you were several artists also that probably made a difference. And also because censorship work on isolation. So gathering is a way to fight that censorship. Um, I hear from what we say, what you said all, uh, uh, this idea of, you know, the, the, the awareness of the different layer, understanding that we have person in front of us, first that we have emotions, because we might just be sometimes so much triggered that we cannot face it, that person become the institution, become the funder, become that, you know, company or corporate that's funding. Uh, uh, so we have multiple layers, we have our emotion, but we have also this person in front of us who's working, doing its work. Sometimes some person are doing their work in a way that's, you know, I would say full, gathering info, getting clarity, not being, you know, subject to just ignorance, okay? Oh, we didn't know that, <laughs> you know, an Israeli is there and that he's fascist. I don't know what, what's that really is it. Uh, so, uh, so the importance of, you know, understanding that we have person and different types of person, and then we have the institutions and we have the funders and how we can, you know, create dialogue and discussion when possible, when it's 
good to create a dialogue when it's not good to create a dialogue. So it requires really a good understanding of, of, of and, 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 and awareness of the context. And then this big question that also we raise, we all raising, uh, I mean, uh, and, and that Yurandas also told about, and then Junior also, you mentioned that, you know, what should we be very firm or not? And when should we go to a clash? And when should we just try to, you know, and, and because we want to be integral to our values. And when we want to play with it in a more playful way so that we can have our ideas come across. I think this is something also that come up with this discussion. So we can take some 10 minutes if you want just to, after listening to each other, if you want to add something about how to handle that censorship uh, or anything about uh, that you he heard from each other. And I'll start with you, Junaid, if you have something you'd like to add uh, or mention. Uh, yes, also from what I heard is like, um, um, I mean, also this is what was part of the discussion with the artistic director in the UK. <clears throat> I mean, sometimes also uh, people forget, for, for, forget that they are putting you at risk because like also they 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 forget that you come from a context and this context uh, you come with it with a responsibility as well and this responsibility is like your own your own narrative your own uh, 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 living your own history you know your own practice your own experience and uh, so when when they try to push you in their, into their into their uh, 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 way of thinking or what they uh, hope you to say, they are uh, neglecting first the the fact that they are putting you at risk and they are just being um, you know like uh, uh, pushing you to neutralize a conflict that is uh, that you can't neutralize because this is. An important matter, like neutralize, like, like when you are in a conflict, there is like a a whole set of values and things and 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 matters about history and people and land and blood and you know, like you need to deal with it before you ask artists in order to like you know to to be banal and neutralize and apolitical and stuff. Like you're an, as an artist, you stand for something. You have a narrative. You talk about it, and this narrative comes from your point of view and from your point of experience, from your experience, your own experience. And this you are responsible about because you are engaged. Because you need to be also, you know, like cohesive with yourself, with your thoughts, with your, uh, you know, context. And this is when censorship and the people in, in let's say, in power or responsible about artistic in institutions or cultural institutions, this is what they what they lose when they censor or when they ask you to change or adapt or something, is to see you as you are, where are you coming from, as like the example of Randa. And they forgot that they are losing something out there because every person's point of view is important. If you are not listening, then we are not. We will not. Won't be able to, to to know to to overcome conflicts. And it starts here. Like, and some people ask us, like for example, in the, in the like in the example of uh, the junior mentioned, because we had it once before also in the festival. Um, I mean, we, we can't do like sit in a discussion or like in an event with a. Um, um, uh, Israeli or Zionist uh, uh, artists just to talk about, you know, funding or something else without talking about the direct issue, like in the conflict, you know, like the conflict that is affecting us together. So no, this th we cannot neutralize that. That's why we 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 no, we don't do that. You know what I mean? And this is a good. Ma the, it's a very important matter. I think the neutralization and how how we should be all aware of that yeah thank you Junaid, for also bringing that perspective because you know to understand also the human complexity in front of us and and to be able to you know understand from where it's coming so that we are stronger because we want to be stronger and and the more we're aware of those layers and and aware that this other person maybe didn't do the homework of you know understanding what he or she or what they are organizing, uh, then also it gives us more power to be able to face them. 
Um, Randa or Jun, do you want to add anything after you know hearing each other about what you know this first part of the discussion? Um, I mean, from uh, the experience, like uh, I am, I was happy to listen to everybody's experiences. I didn't know uh, before, and uh, when Joseph Junior was talking, it came to me that he had a very strong. Um, approach he was able you were able to face and to be very strict about your ideas and uh, and your actions uh well mainly because it's uh, i mean it's a no no but also because you were a group like for me uh, as since this since it was not mentioned as it was not allowed to say it was censorship everything was happening the topic was not raised during the festival. Nobody was really talking about, nobody was ever mentioning anything about Palestine. I felt completely alone. I felt isolated and afraid, actually. I, I thought that maybe if I, if I am, if I, if I hold the case of Palestine, I will be uh, cancelled or I will be put on the side and, uh, and and that created some uh, self censorship. That that made me start questioning myself, as Junaid was saying, and questioning the necessity of of what I was saying, and if it is important. What is what is more important here? So, be, because the the the, the, the it's about the silence. You know, for me, it's about also. This idea of all this is happening in the background, uh, and the fact that these institutions don't want it to be mentioned to the public is also a, a very important part of it, of the censorship, because this, the, because it's not mentioned as such. So again, we are fighting about words. Is this censorship? Is this neutralization? Is this a way of being, uh, of not taking stances? I mean, until today, it's very complex to me to understand our position according to the Western institutions and uh, and curators and uh, and uh, events. Is is that it's important also to say that we are we are speaking their language even now. I mean, if we are mentioning, uh, we are speaking in English, and in these spaces, we are speaking in English or French or Italian or. We are speaking a different language, so we are also trying to understand how they think and how we can address them. Address them. Uh, for me, this 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 silence, this silencing. So, because there's censorship is when you just maybe say to a person, you cannot say that, and but silencing is a different way of of creating uh, censorship that that gets inside of you. And stays with you unless it's spoken. Uh, it's spoken about with the with the organizers or with the public. Yeah, thank you, Randa, for that. And you know, uh, when I was listening to you, it brought some some sadness in me, also to see that uh, that, that that layer of you know of of first like not being able to express also ourselves uh, and what that violence that we're living. Uh, because it's so subtle, because we're facing something so big in front of us, because also that we get into this dilemma. I mean, what, what's best now? What to do? And, and because there is something also so painful, I mean, people are dying as we speak. I mean, my pain is not important anymore also. So we get into all of these things, you know, like, and as you said, all of you, we are at the last, I mean, we, our production issues are not important anymore. I mean, we are just finalizing a play or finalizing a book, and then we have to deal with that pressure. And that's that also is a weight and this risk of inner uh, censorship also. So, yeah, thank you for, for bringing that on the table. Uh, June, anything you'd like to add? For, for uh, I mean, in addition to what uh, all of you said also, and uh, specifically the point of, uh, uh, you know, like having more, uh, like uh, acquiring more knowledge as, as to what are the reasons that push these uh, people or institutions or whatever to be, and also realize the different layers. Uh, I think it's important to, to uh, gain more and more knowledge about that. 
to empower ourselves and to uh, know how to tackle these issues with with uh, with like more precise and being stronger while doing that and uh, the thing is uh, another uh, key aspect of it is that the knowledge of these other uh, people whether people that are trying to censor you or that are succumbing to certain pressures to uh, censor you like uh, uh, under the radar let's call it uh it's also um for me like the question of i'm pretty sure most people by now have seen at least uh, uh, a video or two let's call it at the minimum uh, they have uh, read a paper or two they have uh, uh, had a conversation or two with with people that have that has shown this other side uh, you know whether let's say they didn't know uh, about what was going on or whatever i'm pretty sure by now like this there's a, a huge elephant in the room and uh, at this point it becomes a question of uh like do we do we accept like not us like these people do they accept uh anything over their personal interests like does does it matter anymore that people are dying that uh, there are such uh, horrible things happening or is my uh, you know job or or uh, whatever uh, it is more important and it's yeah i mean the th th things are are so absurd right now because of the the uh, like the at least having the 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 genocide live streamed and because of the so many layers behind it and the violence that's that has been happening since uh, the dawn of that i mean yeah uh it's just like um, a, a, a big topic to 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 dive into and i don't think anyone anywhere can ignore this anymore and it becomes a question of like do you even have values in the first place do you even care about anything other than than yourself yeah 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 and this is even a feeling that we we share and we talk about among us uh, even our in our daily life you know even uh, i mean it becomes really a topic that you need to position ourselves very you know quickly when we are facing that censorship or silencing and it's also a topic that you discuss among among each other in our daily life i mean i mean how can what can we do differently or more to stop what's happening uh, how can we and 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 uh, should we stop everything else we do and then do that i mean this is a question that haunts me and and sometimes it really bring put me in despair or paralyzes me i don't know what to do or how to to act with that question that i hold also you know very uh, heavy sometimes and uh, in myself yeah okay so after this um, first sharing i would like us to move we still have 20 minutes to maybe step back a little bit and and try to think a little bit about what's this iceberg uh, visible part of the iceberg hiding, and and I, I would like to use this uh, quote from you know Charles Bukowski, who said censorship is a tool of those who have the need to hide actualities from themselves and from others, and I find that connected with what you were saying earlier, you know, about when we're, we're dealing with those people and those institution, and uh, 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 do they know or do they know, they know and. If they don't know why this is happening, is it not hiding? <laughs> I mean, what is the responsibility? And and or they know and they are hiding. I mean, all of, all of these questions are are you know uh, there. So I would like us to discuss a little bit today. What are they hiding, or what are we hiding, and what censorship is telling us? And and uh, try to understand. I mean, the big question I would say is this question around you know, know the root of this uh, you know biased value system. When I say biased value system, it's the systems the system where the right of Israel to defend itself is legitimized at the expense of the freedom of Palestinians. So I mean, there is this bias in the values, and there is a kind of justification of violence or acceptance of violence as a way, as a practice. So, and, and before we open that conversation, I would like to just to share some ideas that in the past few months, as we, you know, we discussed um, together as artists and, and colleagues in, in Lebanon about what that censorship tells us. And, 
And, and it tells us that we are facing a crisis of ignorance, <laughs> the best case scenario and worst case scenario, a, crit a crisis of critical thinking. Uh, you know, when it comes to the recent history and the sequences of events that led to the current moment and to the current genocide. So there is this 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 crisis of ign or, or, or this crisis of uh, ignorance and of critical thinking. I mean, to which extent? I mean, did the history start in October? Uh, what did we do about you know integrating uh, our uh, the, 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 the the this this Holocaust and what it happened and the the what we put as a humankind as you know international measures to ensure stability? I mean. What happens to all of this? What what did we do about it? Did we forget all of this? Or did we don't know about it? Or what is it? Uh, it's also telling us, this, this censorship, it's telling us that our dominant social debates in general are becoming more and more post-truth or beyond truth. It feels sometimes that we don't care anymore what's a fake news and what's a true news. And, and I don't want to open a topic about truth. I don't believe in the truth. But I mean, there are facts, there are observations, that are things that happens. I mean, if we look at the political debates uh, in, in, uh, between Biden and Trump in the US, I mean, most of the things that were said or a lot of lies were said. I mean, this is a political debate. So I think this is something else that censorship, I mean, telling us or allowing censorship or, or you know, you know how we say under the censorship. And, and something else that uh, we can mention is this, this censorship that we're facing today shows us a value system where colonialism is still operating and, and serves the white supremacist logic and the exploitation of and abuse of lands and resources. So under the censorship that's visible and the silencing, we have this ignorance, critical thinking, this post-truth, this colonialist logic and and also there is one last point the systems we are as if we are in systems now that reconcile justify or distract from violence in in many militarized societies uh, starting from our countries to the so-called free world or free west so i think today also beside the liberation of palestinian our fight all as 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 people living in this world our fight is to co-create spaces that are based on values of freedom, dignity, liberation, respect of the environment, and interconnectedness. I, I think this is also a debate that is also connected to what we're talking about. So I would like to use this, you know, last 20 minutes that we have to just have a discussion uh, around what, what do, do you have something to add around, I mean, or to comment around what I've just shared about what the censorship is telling us that's not visible. Or, um, uh, and... And what do you think is the role of the artist today uh, uh, facing uh, this reality uh, of, you know, the power dynamics that are around that on the social level? And I'll open the discussion to whoever wants to start and we'll take it from there. And I'll just try to look at it at, at the end. Um, so, yeah, just for you, we have uh, 20 minutes left. And we need to close five minutes before the end. I might uh, say something like on that. I mean, the first moment I was faced with that question about the Holocaust, I was really sad because, as I said, like I'm facing this in a place that it was supposed to be like, you know, uh, defending freedom of expression. And then it came to my mind, like the whole history, you know, like I'm sad because like, you know, in history, the Islamic uh, civilization had a great role in 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 passing and transmitting knowledge from the history of uh, of Mesopotamia to 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 uh, uh, the Greek philosophy to then to the Western philosophy and then uh, uh, also like Western philosophy and science had a lot to give to the world now and when I'm faced and when I see now this happening in Europe and the US, it looks like it's an end of civilization to me, you know, and artists and people and thinkers and philosophers in this in these countries have to think about that. It's an end of civilization. I'm remembering, uh, you know, Galileo, Galileo when, when he proposed his uh, heliocentric theory and the Catholic Church uh, uh, put him under house arrest for the rest of his life. 
And uh, at the end, you know, the earth is not the center of the universe. And at the end, the truth will appear like, you know, all, all indigenous people who were, you know, who lost their lands. Um, uh, I mean, the narrative stays and the narrative is stronger than anything else. And we as artists, this is what we could do, you know, like is to stick to our narratives and uh, to be able to, yeah, to always open discussions and be able to deal with these situations in our ways, because we believe in complexities and these complexities have to live. And it's a place where we can grow. You know, this is the threat that censorship will, will can create is that um, it it's a threat on 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 a human you know imagination and how you be able to be complex and not stick to one mono narrative and uh, so uh, uh, yeah and to use observation and to read and to learn more about history because history is not only how you receive it from social media history you have to dig for it and to to be able to learn and to open your mind to other people's narratives. Let's remember that all the problem, like the Holocaust was a result of, of, of racist uh, uh, practices and views and xenophobia against uh, 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 Jewish migration to Europe, uh, from Eastern Europe. And now the people from the region and from Islamic countries are facing the same. And then, Okay, I think uh, tonight is, is sure. coming. So, um, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, tonight was just talking about that, you know, the, the, this com those complex layers of interconnectedness and how we, as, as, as humans, there's something that we're missing. And don't have the... We are aware. And, uh, tonight, we are cutting tonight. Are you hearing me? So, yeah. Uh, conflicts because it will affect us. Can you hear me? Now you cut for a few minutes, so can you just try to just uh, uh, sum up yeah. the idea? So, yeah. That's it. And at the end, at the end, I would say I also was raised in Saudi Arabia as a child. And I used to look at magazines, you know, like uh, magazines. And whenever you have a woman, uh, a photography of a woman who's not like covering her whole, the whole arm, they would paint it in black, you know? And uh, when a child, I used to see the arm more than like uh, under the paint. I could like imagine the arm more, and it's it gives you more imagination. So what censorship is trying to do get a negative negative impact. And one cancellation of uh, one event will not allow 300 people to watch or one or 1,000 people, but a cancellation of one event will give like three to four to five million views and shares, and it will bring more light on the matter. So uh, let's also think about all of this and uh, yeah, be able to, you know, listen to each other and observe. Okay, thank you. Tonight, Junior or Randa, uh, and Randa, who wants to start? Junior, you want to say something? Uh, yes, sure. Um... I would maybe like to take a little step back to what you were mentioning before, uh, more about like framing uh, the the situation in certain places, like the right for Israel to defend itself and like other absurdities like that. And uh, also here, like taking this opportunity to also think about the the let's say the the power structures or the system under which this sort of thing falls into and to understand also uh for me at least i find it uh, a bit uh, uh, harmful to only uh frame the thing about, uh, as uh, like the right for whoever to defend himself or whatever and uh, to also look at the the layers behind that and like the the sort of uh, systems that uh, these sort of sorts of thing happen under uh, meaning uh, mainly like the exploitation of other uh, uh, territories or areas the exploitation of other people 
of uh, mainly indigenous people or whatever there's opportunities to make uh, more whether it's profit to make more political gains to make more uh, uh, any of that to happen so also it's important uh, to to see it under the uh, uh, a certain system that is enforcing these things now i don't at least also for me i don't believe in uh, uh, the fact that uh, you know it, it's a certain people's uh, wanting to claim their land or whatever that uh, led to all of this uh, happening it's been actually the interests of all these uh, 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 again let's call it power structures or or whatever we want to name them and uh, here uh, to, uh, i'm mentioning this to to, uh, to take it to like maybe us as artists or even like any uh, any person to realize the, the 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 dynamics behind that as well and also to uh, as you were mentioning uh, be be more vocal about uh, what we're saying and and together and also for me uh, it's very important as artists not to fall uh, in these uh, systems or structures not only by uh, not saying anything about it but by actually participating in, in in these systems whether consciously or unconsciously and taking a moment to realize what kind of uh, platforms we're on what kind of uh, uh, systems we're part of what kind of uh, 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 you know, uh, narratives were being portrayed as part of as well, and to to reflect upon all of that as well. Yeah, thank you, uh, Jun, to in, to bring this uh, you know bigger background or background idea of, of you know the economic system in which we we live also, and what's our relation to that as artists and with the law of market. I would say, I mean, uh, this is another topic, but it's connected to that, and I would love to have more space all together and you know with other artists and other people to discuss those issues today because they are at the core of what we're living today. Uh, Randa, we have uh, yeah, we have a few minutes uh, if you want to add something. Uh, a lot of things, but uh, I think uh, uh, yeah. for uh, for okay. us, the people who are living in safe spaces until now, the war is a war of uh, narrative and of framing of how you frame this. Um, for when I was faced with uh, the censorship at the beginning, uh, I was really shocked because I was not expecting it. I mean, when you go to Saudi Arabia, you expect to be censored, but when you are living in France, you don't expect. And that raised a lot of questions for me, actually. And I started digging into making the effort to dig into the past, to understanding what is the narrative that they are using and what are they really afraid of to take positions. And for me, I understood that this that not only they are afraid about losing funding and but they are also afraid of these two 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 major um, um frames that that we've been fought with which is anti-semitism and terrorism which which i understood also by rereading all edward said and the likes is that these are tools that have been used since long time i mean even in the 50s and the 60s we they everybody every now and then that somebody would i mean uh, fight or talk about israel is the use of anti-semitism and terrorism is being used to silence people and uh, so so we're faced with and 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 this is what's very difficult for us to understand and we will totally refuse to to enter this logic because we're faced with a political entity that is Israel, we, uh, we as uh, Lebanese particularly as well, I mean, Israel for me is a political entity that I've been faced with, a violent political entity that, uh, that, I've, I'm in, that I've been subject to wars with, is not uh, some idea uh, that, uh, and, uh, that, that was framed uh, and uh, thought about and discussed and and uh, and implemented as a discourse i mean for for us like what we what we face when we're censored is not only a censorship we are emotional like you're like you're saying it's like we already don't make sense of all this violence it it triggers a lot of personal traumas and uh, and there's the and we're watching every day people being killed and people on the other side discussing terms 
discussing if this is a, a genocide, if this is an anti-Semite, if, the, if, can, if we can call this hate speech or terror. And, and we're getting lost in these, in these terms and discussions, while the actual fact is that there is, the, 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 I mean, there's a genocide that is happening right now. And, and, and I understood from all this research that when they cre- the, the term genocide was created to, to, to being able to stop it. I mean, the, the ICG can stop the genocide. While if you use the word massacre, you wouldn't be able to raise all these political forces in order to issue some w- rules to stop, uh, to stop something while it's happening. So this is why we are faced with, and, and, and and the fight that these European and Americans are leading on with on on behalf of the Zionists is is um, is really uh, uh, sad. I mean, saddening is not the right word, but uh, completely revolting. They they think, but by neutralizing this this uh, what is happening, they are participating in it somehow. Yeah. So I and I I I I think that what what you're talking about is that the, the responsibility also I hear the last bit that you're saying and it's, it's the responsibility of all of us not only today, you know us as artists or as people living under occupation living those atrocities of that Zionist project its expansion and its occupation in in the region since 1948 and when we say Zionist just to say is the idea of you know uh, the basic idea that we that is is about that creating a national identity based on religion, which is something that's also recent in our history uh, uh, in, the, in in this region of the world. And I mean, this is another topic that we can discuss. I mean, our history is a different history. It's not that history that colonial power taught or forced us to think about. You know, we go back also to the self, you know, self interiorization of the mechanisms of power. Um, so, uh, thank you, Randa, for for bringing that also perspective of, of history and the use of words. You know, when you said also, you know, that it's a long, it started a long time ago. Yes, it started a long time ago. And one of the questions that I hold dear to myself, I say, maybe I didn't speak enough before. <laughs> maybe I should have speaked more before because we know we know all of us since we were born. So uh, I think this is also something that stays sometimes with me as a question. So. Um, one 30 seconds. Anyone would like to add something in 30 seconds before I close up? Because we have to close up in a few minutes. Or shall I just I mean, wrap up? I, I was very surprised also that throughout the world, music festivals, bands go out and fight against wars. I mean, just and and today to say ceasefire now is considered anti-Semite and nobody and everybody is afraid to say stop as, as war became uh became a political engine and uh, and this is this is what's really sad really saddening and revolting and uh, scary yeah yeah and i was in one of the festival where you were ramda and i remember you know when we you started talking about and speaking up about the genocide and one of the person in in the audience said cease fire now i got scared <laughs> at first feeling was fear uh, uh so yeah um Anyone else would like to add anything? No, fine. So I mean, I'll um, uh, I'll I'll just you know I I will uh, mention that um, you know one of the points that I will um, keep uh, or, or a kind of call I would like to make today or is that uh, the occupation I mean uh, um, uh, of Palestine by Israel and the current genocide in action. Uh, are a reminder for any free spirit, uh, all indigenous and colonized bodies to rise up, all women subject to the weight of patriarchy to speak up. It's a call to act really today for everyone, for our dignity, for our freedom, and for the sustainability of humankind. I really think it's about, you know, this, this banalization and this justification of violence is asking us a real question about the, you know, the sustainability of our species. So it's not only about Palestine, uh, and I would like you know to uh, to say that I mean um, 
and with you know this this quote of uh, uh, of two quotes I have in mind uh, for 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 this um, encounter, which is one quote is from Nawal Sadawi that says uh, they tried to bury us, but they did not know we were the seed. Um, so we will always, you know. Uh, 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 as we said all, you know, as you said, Junaid, you know, uh, or maybe Junior, I don't know who said that, you know, if, if we are censored, I mean, we will create noise about it. And we will create, I think this is something that as long as we can, uh, um, uh, sometimes we might have this on our head, a gun. Um, and, uh, uh, and I think today the call also is for all our listener and maybe connecting from uh, um, other part of the world, I would like to also share this quote of Angela Davis, who said, in a racist society, it's not enough to be non-racist. We must be anti-racist. Uh, so I think there is a clear call for action today, because as we are all saying, I mean, I, I saw uh, some of the you know um, numbers that we have about what's the genocide that's happening, is that each 10 minutes there is a kid that's being killed in Gaza. The numbers that we are talking about, the 40,000, is, a, I think, I mean, I mean, I have a mathematical background. I think it's a very optimistic um, uh, a proxy, approximation of the number of death, of the number of atrocities, people under the rubbles, people that disappeared, who disappeared. So I think today it's really that call for action toward that and uh, and each one fights his fights. Uh, we fight at the words, we fight the systems, we, find, we fight our right of being present and to talk. Uh, um, and I think it's a call for everybody to understand their own responsibilities. Thank you for your time. And thank you again, Sahar and all the organizers for, for this uh, moment. I would like now to introduce session 15. Uh, and it's a, a conversation with Palestinian journalists. And I'm happy to have this session after the censorship session because topics are connected. Uh, and I would like to welcome uh, Vera Sejawi, uh, who will be, you know, facilitating this. Uh, thank you, uh, Vera, and I wish you really to enjoy and good luck for your session. Thank you. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you.